you. All right, recording in progress. And so first person tonight, I'm gonna ask Jessica to read uh, what God, what Jesus says about forgiveness and read uh, the first one, Mark chapter 11 and 25. Would you read that? And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. All right. Doesn't that sound like that's kind of conditional? Glory to God. If you want to be forgiven, you got to forgive. Uh, but that also says that the Lord has responsibility that, that the Holy Ghost would remind us that we've got an issue, glory to God, with some folks that we're holding against them. And, uh, and so the Holy Ghost reminds us and he says, listen, when you stand praying, I want you to understand. The Holy Ghost is going to remind you that you still haven't forgiven Sister Cornbread for what she said last Sunday, last month, two years ago, glory to God, uh, five years ago. And so you need to go and just get that straight. You go humbly to them to get that done. Is that all right? Glory to God. Um, and so it's important for us to kind of actually prepare ourselves to do this. Um, and, and incidentally, if anybody has anything, glory to God, to say as we go along, you know, I solicit that. Glory to God. I encourage you to say what's on your heart. Uh, share what God has given you to share because it will encourage somebody else. Is that all right? Uh, Missionary Ivy, it's so good to see you. Can you read the next one for us in Matthew 5, 23 and 24? It says, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, mm -hmm. and there remember that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Amen. All right. right. What does that say to you, Elder? I say, if I, if I have, if me and my brother have an ought, and I remember when I go to that altar, get off the altar, go to my brother and get that thing right, then come back to the altar. Wonderful. You know what's interesting with those two uh, verses we read? The first one speaks to the fact that if you have an issue, then you go get it together. The next one says that if you realize your brother has an issue or your sister, then you go and get that together. Uh, and then you leave your gift at the altar, go your way, first be reconciled or re reconnected with your uh, brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. So the first one is if you have an issue, but we have a responsibility if we realize that somebody has an issue with us. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. And that's important for us to get uh, to understand that there, in both cases, we are required as the saints of the Lord to go and address that thing with, glory to God, somebody else. Did you raise your hand, Elder? Yes, yes, Pastor. So, so, so if, if someone does something to me, right, and they don't come to me, but I know it, is this what they're saying? I need to go to them too? I think that, well, let me see. Is there anybody else want to answer that question? <laughs> huh? Anybody else want to wade in this water? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, if not, let me just say yes. <laughs> Go, Go ahead. ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. No, no. No, the reason why I say that, Pastor, because some, sometimes a lot of us say, no, it wasn't my fault. You know, they did it. So it's on them. And this is not what the scripture is saying. It says, if, you know, either or, you need to go and get that thing straight, all right? If somebody done something to you and you know they did it, I mean, you know some friction there and some conflict, you know, if they don't come to you and you, you know, you go into the altar, then you already, it's in your conscience, you need to go to them. So I believe that's the way I'm perceiving that. I received that, Sister Wright. Amen. I'm glad that you brought that out, uh, Pastor and Elder Ivory, because I know I have sure tried to wiggle my way out of this scripture many a day. 
<laughs> but I knew that I couldn't because he did put it both ways. Um, and oftentimes it was just like what you said. I felt somebody else had done something to me. And so I'm thinking, well, I, you know, I'm in the right. Why do I have to go to them and try to get anything straight? They should come to me. But no, that's exactly, it says exactly what it says and it means what it says. Fantastic. Amen. Uh, and so we, the saints of God, have that responsibility. We have the responsibility. Listen, we are, you can put this in the chat box. I am the light of the world. God has made me the light. We are the light of the world. Glory to God. I'm the light. So I bring, uh, bring light to where there's darkness. Amen. And uh, you often heard me say light shines brightest where it's darkest. And when you've got an issue with somebody who's hurt your heart or they have an issue with you, it's a dark place. Amen. The next scripture, glory to God, can be found there. Sister Mignon, I, I don't know if you're able to read, Sister Mignon, glory to God. And if so, you can read uh, the next one, which is Matthew 6, 14 and 15. I'm not sure if you can see that, sis. It looks like uh, you're on the phone, so I'm not sure if you can do that. Glory to God. And if you're not able, I understand, I do. Can you hear me? Okay, I got you now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. It says uh, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Mm -hmm. What that say to you? That's so plain, that's... that's that's so plain a, a, a child can understand that one. Basically, if you can't forgive your brethren, then, then your heavenly father is not gonna forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you can't forgive him for any offense, then God can't forgive you for your sins and your offenses. Amen, I received that, glory to God. God, I want you to do it for me, but I'm not gonna do it for nobody else. Glory to God. Uh, and so, uh, often it's really difficult when, when people have, have had your trust, when people have become close to you, then it's most difficult to forgive them because they betrayed your trust. Glory to God. But how many know that in our sins, we betrayed God's trust? Lord, you know what? Since we've been saved, let me just make that. <laughs> Since we've been saved, glory to God. We have done that which we knew we should not do. Now, some of y'all gonna say, no, I tripped. I, I didn't jump down, I tripped. Some of that stuff you planned, glory to God. Knew it wasn't right, planned it, glory to God. But God forgave you when you ask him to forgive you, glory to God, God forgave you. And uh, so we need to do that. What, this is what Jesus says about forgiveness. Now I'm ask everybody here to please, in the lines that are below, uh, it gives you a place to write the scripture, glory to God, write it out, write the scripture out, and then put what the scripture is after the little blank on the last line, you put what the scripture is, just as we've done uh, prior to that, uh, so that we're taking time to go through the word and make it real to us, make it applicable to our lives, uh, make it personal. Come on, somebody write in the chat box, make it personal in the comment section. Glory to God, make it personal. It's personal to me, amen? Number two, glory to God, forgiveness. Let me read this here. Forgiveness, an essential ingredient of your peace. The willingness to forgive is a sign of spiritual and emotional maturity. It is one of the great virtues to which we should all aspire. Imagine a world filled with individuals willing both to apologize and to accept an apology. Glory to God. You ever tried to apologize to somebody and they really didn't receive it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. <laughs> is, there any problem, is there any problem that cannot be resolved among people who possess the humility, largeness of spirit and soul, and the Holy Ghost to do either or both when needed, to forgive or receive forgiveness. Amen? To forgive or receive forgiveness. All right. And so 
uh, and that was Gordon B. Hinckley. I, uh, I, I saw that and I said, this is, this is rich right here. It speaks to maturity, speaks to growth, speaks to development. How many know we should grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? We grow in grace. We should be developing each day. We should be sharpening our swords so that we have the ability to be as effective as we can going down our spiritual journey road. Uh, and understand, uh, there's going to be some people who need you to develop so that you can help them as you meet them down the road, as you interact with them down the road. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. It is critical for us. We can't continue to listen to folks who refuse to grow and let them be our guide. We cannot continue. I don't care what their title is. I don't care what, if they have your last name, doesn't matter if they're your best friend, your ace, boon, coon. That might not be the phrase y'all use anymore. Uh, your BFF, glory to God. Whatever it is, just because they are close to us does not mean we allow them to give, give us excuse for living beneath what God requires of us. Can I talk to somebody? Pastor, you being a little bit harsh tonight. No, I'm saying that we, come on, put somebody put in the chat box, maturity and emotional growth or, or spiritual and emotional maturity. Put it in the chat box, spiritual and emotional maturity, spiritual and emotional maturity. Glory to God. You got to get over some stuff. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. I know they did it and I know they did it many times. But what you surely must do is now, and I'm not saying that you excuse, as I read earlier, you don't excuse their behavior. It ain't like you forget what they do. As a matter of fact, it's not good to forget because if you forget, you'll put yourself back into the same situation. All right. So, it, but it is important that you have to forgive them so that you can continue to be developed and help others along the way. Uh, glory to God. Good to see Mother Henry online. Good to see you, Mother. God bless you. Missionary Brooks, can you read, can you read uh, the first one here? Forgiving ourselves is a great place to start the process. Forgiving ourselves is a great place to start the process. Let me say, Missionary Brooks, before you read that first one, Philippians 3, 13 through 14, listen, it's, it's extremely difficult and not impossible to forgive folks down the road if you're still holding the grudge against yourself. It's hard to forgive other folks if you haven't forgiven yourself, all right? It's hard to do that. It's hard to get there. Uh, Missionary Brooks, if you'll read uh, Philippians 3, 13 through 14. Are you there, Missionary Brooks? Glory to God. Let me come back to you. Get prepared for the next one if you're not there. Missionary Edmondson, can you read Philippians 3, 13 through 14? Missionary Edmondson. Have I lost everybody? <laughs> oh, it has to. All right, go ahead, precious sister. Is that Sister Galvan? Yes, sir. Oh, wonderful. Come on, read that for me. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Christ Jesus. Precious, what does that say to you, briefly? Just to kind of let things go, let things go and, and look ahead for what's coming better. Good, good, good. That's good, that's very good. Let me just tell you something, saints. Glory to God. Uh, I have not gotten it all yet, Paul declares. I haven't gotten it all yet, but I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. I've done some things. I've made some mistakes. 
but I'm not going to continue to beat myself up with the mistakes I made. I have asked God to forgive me and I'm walking away from that behavior and lifestyle. I forgive myself so that I can grow and develop and be all that God has called me to be. How many know the devil is always reminding you of your past? Always reminding you of your past. Glory to God. So you've got to understand. I see you too, sis. But you've got to understand that you've got to grow forward. Come on, right in the chat box. Grow forward. Don't just go forward. Grow forward. Develop. Become more mature and more solid in your walk with God. Sister Mignon. Yes, Pastor. Did you? Yeah, I thought you had your hand up, but you were agreeing. No. Okay. No, I'm just agreeing with you. Okay, all right. I didn't know if you had had that word to share. All no. right. <laughs> Did any of those other I called Missionary Brooks or Missionary Edmondson, are you all ready to read the next one? Glory to God. I'm at work. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. Glory to God. Let me get somebody else to read for me. Somebody just step in and read that next one. Uh, Romans chapter eight, one through two. Forgiving ourselves is a great place to start this process, this forgiving process. All right. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. As Romans yes. 8, 1 and 2. Yes. Glory to God. Which did scripture did you want me to read, Pastor? Uh, you will be able to read the next one, which is 2 Corinthians 5 uh, and 17. Um, but before you do that, Brother Klinkscale, did you want to say anything regarding the scripture you just read? The, the thing that I, I take from that is that as uh, men and women in Christ Jesus, we should walk on a spiritual level and live our lives at that level. And that should cause us to, you know, we may struggle with the things of the flesh, but since we are governed by the law of the spirit, then we should carry ourselves as the spirit dictates, not as the flesh. That's good, that's good, my brother. And let me just tell you, there is therefore now, that means there is no condemnation. The enemy, as I forestated, is always trying to bring an accusation. He's an accuser of the brethren, the brethren and the sistren, all right? He always is accusing us. He's always bringing stuff up. He's always trying to uh, not only bring old stuff, but saying that even the things you did didn't go over well, and they went over fine. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. And so he's always trying to condemn you. And so you've got to get to a place, glory to God, where you just say, and, and, and he will intentionally or unintentionally use folks to make you feel guilty or remind you of your past. Sometimes they don't even know they're being used. Glory to God. So you've got to understand that I'm not walking uh, in condemnation. I know that God has forgiven me and I'm walking in the direction of my assignment. Glory to God. And so thank you, Lord. I'm going to continue swinging at the enemy's kingdom, trying to tear down his wall. Amen. Because he wants to steal your effectiveness. He wants to dull your sword. All right. Come on. Uh, Missionary Edmondson, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Missionary Edmondson, you still there? Oh, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> verse, <laughs> verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
What does that say to you briefly, missionary? It says to me, it's like I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm new. I'm a new creation. Like the song say, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away and I'm born again. So Hallelujah. those things, I ain't going to be doing them. I ain't going to be saying them no more. They are passed away. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Wonderful. Somebody write in the chat box in the comment section, I forgive myself. Come on. Right in there, I forgive myself. One of the best places to start to forgive other folks is to start with forgiving yourself. I forgive myself. Yeah, I said it. I shouldn't have said it. God, forgive me. Now let me move on. Now, when I really mean that, then I'm not going to be falling back into that continually. Uh, God's going to give me strength to move forward. Can I talk to somebody? When I really repent, some folks say I'm sorry, but they haven't repented. Glory to God. But when we repent, it really means to turn 180 degrees going in the other direction. I forgive myself. Glory to God for making that phone call. I forgive myself for entertaining that conversation. I forgive myself. Glory to God. <laughs> for, I ain't going to bring a whole bunch of more uh, examples because somebody's going to say, Pastor, preach it on me. Let me just tell you this. I forgive myself. Whatever the Holy Ghost brings up, you ask God to forgive you and you forgive yourself. I need you to write in the bottom your scripture. You need to agree to find a scripture that relates to forgiving yourself. There's a ton of them. Glory to God in the word of God. All right. Ton of them. Glory to God. There's a bunch of them. And, and I, as I was going through the list, glory to God, there was so many. I only, and I knew our time was running short. So I only had three or four for each one of these, but I wanted to leave a spot for you to do some homework, some work on your home, your spiritual home, your physical home, this body. All right. Does that make sense? Glory to God. Uh, and so I want you to, to do that. The next one that we come to is a, accept God's forgiveness and his view of you. Accept God's forgiveness that he's already given to you and the way he sees you. Forgiving means that you refuse by God's grace to let the anger, resentment, and pain energize your carnal agenda and allow the enemy to steal peace from your soul. And you can find that answer. If you go, we'll go over to Philippians 4, 4 through 7. We're going to go there. But forgiving, forgiving means to refuse by God's grace to let the anger, resentment, and pain energize your carnal agenda and allow the enemy to steal peace from your soul. He's always trying to steal, to dampen to the light that's in your soul. Glory to God. And so it's so critically important for you Glory to God, to accept what God has already done in your own, in your body, in your life. Glory to God. Somebody read uh, 1 John 1 and 9 from one of my favorite scriptures. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. What did I say to you, Reverend? Oh, Pastor, that tells me that we must... We must die this flesh daily. We got to continue to, to pray, continue to ask God to forgive us. And that way he can just cleanse us each and every day because we know this is, is we weak. And so if, if we walk out of here, not dying this flesh, not, not cleansing us each and every day, we liable to do some things that, you know, we ought not do. So we have to pray each and every day to die this flesh daily. And that know, we know that we confess our sins to our, to our, to our heavenly father that he's going to cleanse us and make sure that we don't make that same mistake that we made before. All right. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Reverend. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all of it. Somebody put in the chat box, all of it. Glory to God. God's not going to clean and leave some stuff in the corners. All right. God's not going to clean some of it. Glory to God. Sometimes we get to cleaning some stuff and we see a little stain and take a little bit of extra work so we stop and move on. No, no, no. That's not the Lord. When you give it to him, he cleans it up. And so then you walk in the newness of life. That's how God sees you because he sees you through the blood of Jesus. I was thinking I needed to talk to the choir 
Glory to God. We're going to go back to work and build an choir up in Newark. Glory to God so that they're there on time on Sunday morning so we can do a little less of this uh, video stuff. Glory to God. I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying. And, uh, and even until we get a musician, sing some acapella. But one of the songs, glory to God, that really has been on my heart these last couple of weeks is The Blood Still Works. Somebody put in the chat box, The Blood Still Works. The Blood Still Works. And so he sees you through the blood of Jesus. And that's why he sees you whole. That's why he sees you righteous. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody read the next one for me. And if anybody has anything to say, you can raise your hand. Somebody read the next one. Romans 5, 6 through 8. It's on the paper. It's on the screen. I'll read, um, you said Romans 5, 6, and 8? It's right there on the screen. 5, okay. 6 through 8. Mm -hmm. um, where it says, the Lord, our God, is merciful and forgiving. No, no, no. Romans 5, 6 through 8. It says, for when we were still. Oh, it's not on. Oh, for when we were still without, without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. What that say to you briefly, son? That, I mean... That I mean, when we were weak, when we, you know, when we didn't have the strength, God was, He was with us already. He already knew us before we we were uh, conceived in our mother's womb. You know. All right, that's it. He talks to us about the fact that when we were still sinners, we didn't have any strength to stand. Christ still died for us. He died for the ungodly, and so all souls are mine. The Bible says the soul of. Uh, the father and the soul of the son, but the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. Sinneth means to continue to live in sin, not that stumbles and falls, but continues to live in that. And the ETH, you've all heard me say this before, but let, it bears repeating. ETH on the end of the word is the same as putting an S there, which means continues to do so. Glory to God. So it says to us, glory to God, that when, uh, when Christ died for us, and he says he would, rarely would somebody die for a good person. Glory to God, but but Christ, but God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How does he see me? He sees me as precious and important. He sees me, said he loves me so much. Uh, there was a song, Brother Anthony, uh, Anthony, was it Anthony Brown? I think he used to sing, you thought I was worth saving. Glory to God. So you came to change my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Glory to God. So it's important for us, amen, to recognize God sees you as extremely precious, valuable, amen, beyond measure. Somebody read for me the next one, uh, Daniel 9 and 9. How God had God's accept God's forgiveness and how he views us. Somebody read that for me. I'll read again. Uh, the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Daniel 99. All right. How does he forgive us? He forgives us. Glory to God. Uh, even though we rebelled against him, he looks at us with mercy. He looks at us, glory to God, with forgiveness the peace of God, which passes all understanding that keeps our heart and our mind. Glory to God through Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And so uh, I want somebody to write in the chat box, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. You need to write that down. Don't let the enemy bring you back some stuff that God has already forgiven you for. Mother White, you have your hand up. Please say something precious. I didn't see that. Oh, I was just going to read it, but I, he already did. But it kind of well, coincides. 
Go ahead. According with the one we just just read, it's the same thing. You know, God is merciful to forgive for whatever. You mm. know, He's forgiving God. That's why He died. You kind of cut off, Mother. Did I you forget? Did you finish? I stopped because it went away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, brother. All right. So I put somebody, I saw somebody put in the chat box, I am forgiven. Listen, saints, you write these down. One of the reasons I'm asking you to do that because I need you to grab a hold of this because the enemy is going to come and it won't even, he won't even let you go through the night before he brings something back up. Something you said to somebody, glory to God, something you did, something, glory to God, that uh, maybe you thought about too long, whatever it was, you're forgiven. Ask God to forgive you, it's done. Glory to God. Let me go to the next one. And uh, in, in the fourth quarter, come on. Uh, uh, and we are here, forgiveness, an essential ingredient of your peace. Forgive anyone who has caused you pain or harm. Keep in mind that forgiving is not always for others as much as it is for you. Forgiving is not forgetting. It is remembering without anger. It frees up your power, heals your body, mind, and spirit. Forgiveness opens up a pathway to a new place of peace where you can persist despite what has happened to you. Somebody put in the chat box, growing forward, regardless. Growing forward, regardless. Come on, put that in there. Growing forward, regardless. It is important for us to get this, saints of God. God has been good to you, and I'm growing forward, regardless. Can I talk to somebody? Mm -hmm. Mom, mother, you were going to read Matthew 6 and 14, my willingness to forgive those who have harmed me. And, and we had to get here. Y'all know we had to get here. I had to forgive myself, glory to God. Uh, I had to see myself the way God sees me, and I'd have to remember and hold on to the fact that God has forgiven me. But uh, what God says about forgiveness, but here I go, my willingness, am I willing to forgive those who have harmed me? Mother, can you read that for me? For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Mm hmm You want to just good. summarize that? Mm hmm Yes, because if you if this is if you forgive if I forgive someone that did something against me, then I expect God to do the same for me willingly because I'm willing to forgive even though they may not but I did what I needed to do. And he sees my honesty. And he sees that I, that I mean what I'm saying to them, so he's gonna forgive me. And it's time I do something. Wonderful, mother, that's wonderful. Hey, but you brought something up. Let me ask this question to the class. Maybe somebody will uh, come back with uh, their thoughts on this. Uh, listen, uh, if somebody did something to you, do they have to be remorseful for you to forgive them? No. <laughs> <laughs> have to. No, okay, you huh? just have to do your part. You just do your part. Yes, so ma'am. You do your part. You speak up and you ask for forgiveness. That's all you can do. You've done all you can do. And if they hold something there, that's nothing. You can't beat them over the head and say, do you really, really forgive me? <laughs> I've asked you to forgive me. I love you. Move on. It's up to them to not. They got to sell that with the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, Missionary Ivy, you said they should. They should what? What is that? I'm saying that they should uh, 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 have some type of conviction in their heart to know that they, they know that they did something. They know that they did something, but you know, and not to, to, to walk by you, you know, to keep going and acting like that they didn't do anything to you. You know, um, I'm saying that they should be able to repent to you. Of course, 
we're going to keep on going. But at the same time, you got to be careful in that little area there because you don't want anything to start building up, you know, because it, be, it becomes like, now they know they did something. I told them and they still didn't repent. Then there's a problem. And then you can also start, you know, saying, well, building up something inside. You know, you can start like, for real, I'm I don't, then you start questioning, are they saved really? Because if they were saved, then they will be, have that conviction or is it real? Or is it just, they just doing it around the church, you know? So I hope I'm making some sense, pastor. No, you, you, you made your point. Uh, brother clean scale, sister, Wright, And then sister rig maiden. briefly y'all share what y'all got. Uh, yes. Y'all going to cut me off in a few minutes. I, I you know, go ahead. Yes. I was going to say, you know, in a, in a perfect world yes they would you know show that but even in situations where you may not even be aware that you hurt someone by your actions or if they they may not be aware but they are keenly aware that you're hurt by it they may have be like well i didn't really do this or that or i didn't intend for this reaction from you they ought to steal forgive mm -hmm. and stuff it, it may not have the perfect world yes but i always say you know if i see that i hurt somebody's feelings even when i wasn't trying all right it, it would be good to just you know uh you know forgive and move forward from there they ought to yes sister right amen i agree with uh both missionary ivory and brother clean squeal because um, I think part of the problem is that people a lot of times don't know or they're not aware that they hurt you. But then a big problem for me is that 90% of the time, even if I'm hurt, I won't say anything. You know, that's why I said I always try to wiggle out of that scripture because I won't go to them and tell them that they hurt me. But if you, one thing I've learned is that if you don't address it, it will start to build up like Missionary Ivory was saying, and it can cause you to be hindered in your spiritual growth. So even if they are the one who might have been wrong in the situation, you're the one who's being hurt by it by not addressing it. And I think that's why, you know, the Bible says either way it goes, you need to go back and get that straight. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Missionary Rig, maybe? Praise God. What a beautiful lesson tonight. Um, Missionary Wright just took the words out of my mouth. Um, but just to add on to that, you know, um, whether someone forgives us or not, uh, we have to continue on. We know or, or receive our forgiveness um, or our apology or their apology. Um, the thing is, we can't just hang around and wait for the remorse. We have to understand that we must forgive them in our heart and in our mind and understand that even though someone does not forgive you, that is nothing to gloat about. Our heart should be heavy because of that, because we want our brother and sister to grow with us. We forgive them, but we want to be able to encourage them so that they can work on that, whether they come up um, to where they should be or not, we, we need to pray for them. We must forgive them. If they don't accept our apology, if we do something to them, let's continue to live right before them. Let's continue to be that example before them. So maybe we can grow together in unity. Wonderful. Saints of God, let me just share with you. It's not required for them to forgive you or to, you have a responsibility given you by the Lord and you don't know whether where they are spiritually, maturely. You don't know what's going on. So it becomes your responsibility. And if you know what's required, it becomes your responsibility to live in that you know. And that might help to bring them to a place that they're not ready to move into yet. But by your continued walking in the way that glorifies God will help them to see, oh, this is the way it should be. Some people will never get it, but your responsibility is to live it, whether they get it or not. Can I talk to somebody? You have to be, it's not required for them to have remorse, although we want them to. It would be nice when we came to say to them, listen, I am so sorry, or you know, you hurt my feelings. And uh, I was a little bit offended, 
Because you go to them humbly. You know you are. You're so spiritual. Oh, for my sister, you know, I was a bit offended. Well, you should have you should have not heard me. You shouldn't have not did that. Well, you know, that that could be a situation where you feel like I shouldn't have never went to him. No, no, no. You did it because God, the Holy Ghost, gave you an uh, unction to go do it. Now, you don't know the effect that's having on them in their hearts, in their soul. So though they might not receive it right now, that thing is working on them. Little by little, it's developing them. Because see, we uh, somebody put it in the chat box, thank you, Sister Bridget. One plants, another waters, God gives the increase. And so you just might be planting or watering, but you're helping to develop them. Amen? And so God requires to whom much is given, much is required. Amen? Who's going to read the next one for me? Uh, Colossians 3.13 as I move on down the road. Colossians 3.13. Together, forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance, no, I'm I'm at yeah. Go ahead. Did you finish? Hello. Yes. Yeah, I was reading, and somebody uh, had muted me. Right. Uh, it says, uh, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3 and 13. Wonderful. Bear, each, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. It didn't say bear with one another if they receive it in the spirit of kindness and love and and, and if they and if they come to you and say I, i'm sorry too it just gives us a requirement that we have to operate by that we have to live by that we have to grow into somebody put in the chat box grow into grow into because that's what we're required to do grow in grace and in knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ grow into his will we mature day by day amen and so that's colossians 3 13. Glory to God. Uh, come on. Uh, I think Sister Smith, I think Elder Smith, one of y'all, I think you're uh, unmuted to read this next scripture, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Okay, it's, it's me, Pastor. Um, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Matthews, 70. 70 okay. times seven times. Yeah. Matthews 18, 21, 22. All right. What did that say to you, missionary? It says to me that regardless of how many times someone offends you, you still have to forgive them. You still have to have show show the love of God in your heart and forgive them because like we've been saying if you don't forgive God's not gonna forgive you and, All right. and God will deal with those who continue to abuse amen wonderful amen. Uh, sister Sadler I see your hand is up it's very important that we forgive our brothers and sisters because we don't know what death lies for us. And if you don't forgive them, you will stand before God and give an account for that. Now, if that brother or sister is worth you spending the rest of your going to hell for it, then that's up to you. But if you really love God and love them the way you say, you will forgive your brothers and sisters. Now, I'm not saying you got to excuse their behavior because we all are work in progress. Pastor, you're muted. How did I get muted? Okay. Uh, we don't condone bad behavior. We just don't. Amen? But we must grow through that because we are the light that shines. We shine bright in bad behavior. <laughs> 
our light shines and it must continue to shine. Sometimes it shines with a broken heart. Sometimes it shines when we're embarrassed. Sometimes it shines, glory to God, it should shine even when somebody else don't want the light to shine. They don't, they want to continue in the dark, all right? But if you want to continue in the dark and you hang around me, there's going to be some light shining, glory to God. Uh, Sister Bridget, you raise your hand. Good evening, saints. Um, I have a question. Can one forgive and forget? Are we as saints to forgive and forget? So the question is, are we, is it required for the saints to forgive and to forget? You know how we say, I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget what you've done to me. <laughs> that's, I, think, I think that's the spirit with which we say that. Glory to God. Uh, glory to God. Did anybody want to say something? Glory to God. I, that's a good question. A statement of Sister Missionary Smith. <laughs> that is a very good question and it, it it's come up a number of times actually and i don't think you should forget i don't think because it's it's now a part of you okay it's part of the history that's happened now i'm not saying you dwell on it i'm not saying you sit there and let it fester inside you and bubble up because then it's going to start taking root and then bitterness and anger and strife and all that's going to come up but no you forgive them yes honestly and sincerely forgive them and but you're not going to forget something. If somebody hurts you deeply, you don't forget it. It's you know you don't. It, it will the, the pain will subside after time. You know, but you're not going to sit there like I said and dwell on it. But you're not going to forget it. All right. Does anybody else want to answer that before we get to the last scripture? Anybody else? I uh, see two hands. First lady, we haven't heard from you tonight. I mean, look forward to hearing from you. And then afterwards, Missionary Rigmate. Praise God. Well, um, from thinking about this, no, you're not going to forget it. And then and you, you're not going to forget it. You're just not going to forget it. If someone hurts you, you're not going to forget it. But if you truly do as the Lord says and ask him and ask, uh, you know, and forgive them, you will see it. But you have to look at yourself because you know that you have made mistakes yourself and you also want to be forgiven for the things that you've done, but uh, you, you're not going to forget it. That's, I mean, and then, and then really it's according to what the, the degree is, but I just believe that love can just take care of all, all, you know, situations and problems that come up in our life it's just like being in a relationship when you really love someone and you really care about them you will remember what they've done but you forgive them because love covers a multitude of faults good 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 all right sister uh rig maiden and then sister sadler and then i'm gonna come back i don't think i see any other hands if there are okay god bless you love covers a multitude of False. That's what I was going to say as well. But when we think about Jesus going to the cross, we had the easy part. All we had to do is ask for forgiveness. He bore the brunt of our sins for sin he did not know. He took the beating and never said a word. He took the humiliation and never said a word. So we need to be able to do the same with our brothers and sisters. We're human, we're not going to forget, but we can forgive. And if it's hard for us um, to move forward without remembering, just think about the things we do that have harmed people or we've done or said something to others, whether it was on purpose or in error. We want people to forgive us and not to dwell on it. We understand people will remember, but when they don't dwell on that, that helps us to grow even more. That's right. Wonderful. That's right. Mr. Sadler. For me, it always depends on who the person is. Now, if this is a, someone who I'm very fond of, it's very easy for me to forget about it and focus on the good and not dwell on the negative. All right. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Let me just share with you, the Lord has not forgotten the things you have done, but he has forgiven you. And I, I think this is a good uh, uh, 
kind of way to think about this thing. Uh, and I put it over on the left side. It says, forgive anyone who has caused you pain or harm. Keep in mind that forgiving is not for others as much as it is for you. Forgiving is not forgetting. It is not remembering with anger. It is remembering without anger, better stated. So it's important that, uh, and it is often detrimental to your future relationship to not remember what an individual did so that you won't put them or yourself back into an environment or in a, in a situation where they have no ability to change the way they do things or you, glory to God, have forgotten that they aren't necessarily the most trustworthy individuals, all right? And some people have been hurt over and over again because they refuse uh, to not put the other person in a situation where they can't say no or they can't stop doing what they've done. Their behavior is such that that's a habit pattern for them. And so you have to forgive them and love them enough to not put them in a position to sin against you again. Can I talk to somebody? All right. So we don't, we forgive. We absolutely let it go. I don't hold it against them. I'm not angry when I think about it, but it is not smart for them, not smart for me to give them my rent money this month because they left me in a lurch the last time they promised to give it back to me last month. So it's important to be wise. Wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. All right, wisdom is the principal thing. Don't, uh, so you need to remember that. And let me close because my time has run out. It's 8.30, uh, glory to God. Uh, in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. My willingness to forgive those who have harmed me. I am willing to forgive them. I want to forgive them. I'm praying God help me to forgive them, to grow into that place. All right? Does not require me to forget what took place. It does require me to lay it at the altar and ask God through the Holy Spirit to heal me, to help me forgive them. All right? And I think sometimes uh, forgiveness is not like a microwave oven. Sometimes forgiveness is like a conventional oven. It, it, you set it at 350 and it takes a while to get there. But if you keep working on it, God will get you a place, get you to a place of peace and grow you in the process, show you and mature you in the process of the, of the healing that takes place with whatever to happen. He's developing you. He's causing you to see yourself and where we're blaming them in the process, God may show us how we put ourselves in that situation because the Holy Ghost showed us not to do that, not to go there. Help me, Holy Ghost. All right. So I pray. Are there any questions or comments or concerns? I hope this lesson has been informative to everybody. If there are any questions, please uh, raise your hands. Let's, you know, whatever you're thinking, somebody else has probably come along with something very similar uh, and it is important for us to get this. Glory to God. Uh, we are not victims and we don't need to keep putting ourselves, help me, Lord. We don't need to keep putting ourselves in a place of victims. All right. Just because we want somebody to be our friend, we don't have to keep giving them our last dollar. We don't have to keep, glory to God, dri driving all of our gas out the car. They promise to give us gas money and never do. Uh, and then we stuck and can't make it to work on time. We don't have to take being ridiculed and mistreated and talk too badly because we just want a friend. Seek the Lord. He'll give you somebody who appreciates your, uh, your presence, appreciates Amen. your friendship. Can I talk to somebody? Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes we want to just get connected to the most popular person, but the most popular person might not be the best for you. Stop it, Pastor. Time is up. Okay. <laughs> but I am trying to talk to us. If we're going to operate in a unified 
one body, one Lord, one spirit, one baptism. If we're going to operate as in oneness, we're going to have to learn to forgive some folks and to give grace to one another and to not put ourselves in positions with people who have not grown to have that kind of benevolence yet, that kind of grace yet. We want them to, but they haven't gotten there. So use wisdom going forward. Can I talk to somebody? Am I making any sense to anybody? If you receive that, put your hand, your hand up, chat box, put your hand up. Amen. And then, as I stated, if you have an issue with somebody, go humbly to them. You can't go in. You know what you did. No, no, no. You got to go in. Um, Brother Klingscale, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to you. I was offended a little bit, and I know you didn't mean it. It was my issue, but I was offended by that. Could, you know, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Now, if I come to it, and if he go, well, you shouldn't have been hurt. Well, then that's, that hurts me. But the fact of the matter is it hurts him more. But who knows? If I operate in that kind of humility, the spirit of the Lord going to mess with his pillow. It's going to be hard for him to get some good slip if he got the Holy Ghost anywhere near his life. All right. And so it's important for us to understand God is requiring us to not only grow in grace ourselves, but to help others to do so as well. If you love the Lord, would you clap your hands and give God a praise? Glory to God. Would you bless him? Amen. Put some hands up and some hearts. If you got anything out of this lesson, if it blessed you, glory to God. You can have this lesson. You can go back and study. And I'm going to ask everybody who will to go back and find a scripture for each one of those segments. It's only four. If the Lord takes you to some more, would you do that? Would you get a relevant scripture to that particular thing, that particular topic, and uh, or a portion of the, the topic? And uh, that'll be a good Bible study for us. Amen? God bless everybody tonight. We love you with our whole hearts. I haven't gotten to teach you all in a, in a little while, and that's fine. It's by design. I appreciate it. Um, but uh, I wanted to kind of come back and teach a little bit tonight and uh, kind of work on something that the Lord has been dealing with. I really felt like there needed to be this kind of a topic coming forward because, you know, what happens is the devil is always stirring up stuff and we got to be on the lookout, right? The Bible tells us to watch and pray. We got to keep our eyes open because he will stir up some stuff. Amen. And uh, you could have been saved a long time, but the devil will still stir up some stuff. And so the elders, y'all elders, don't, don't get mad with me. I'm just using all the example ministers. Glory to God. Uh, we'll, we'll find something with another minister or we'll think somebody didn't talk to me like I'm an elder or one of the mothers will feel like, glory to God, they didn't listen to me or the pastor will feel like, glory to God, they didn't respect me. And that's all the enemy raises up that stuff. None of us is immune to the devil coming against us. So it's important for us to have wisdom to be able to say with the word of the Lord, just like these, Jesus did, use the word of the Lord on the devil and back him up by the spirit of God. Amen. If you'll get your best seed together, if anybody had any questions, I think I asked that already. But if you'll get your best seed together, glory to God. And we want to uh, be a blessing to the Bible study tonight. I'm asking everybody to sow a seed. I'm Glory to God, going to do it as well. I feel a little extra um, tonight. I'm going to sow $50. I, I really feel like God is doing something uh, in the ministry, and he's blessing us both in, at both locations. He's doing a tremendous work. Glory to God. And I, I want to be a part of that blessing. I want to be a part of that. Amen. You all know you can give with GiveLify and um, PayPal, uh, Cash App. Uh, is Missionary Burnett online? Are you there? Or Sister Bridget, can you give us the announcements tonight? Do you remember them? Um, yes. Okay. Tomorrow night, Missionary Barker is asking all of us to log in tomorrow to have prayer. I believe it's from, it's at six o'clock. 
and we're fasting. And then um, Friday, 23 hours, consecration and fasting and the prayers from 7.30 to 8.30. Amen. I think that's about it for now on top of my head. I'm sorry. No, there are quite a few more things. Let me see if I can find. And then the the of course the past and wife anniversary is the next weekend coming up. Not this Sunday. Next Sunday. Um yeah, that's all I can remember. I'm sorry from work. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. Um Let me pull this up so I can kind of. Uh, incidentally, I want to share a thank with all of you all. Thank you so much for your support and your continued support of the um, I Love My Church campaign from our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and our jurisdictional bishop, Bishop J.W. Macklin. Uh, we were online with, uh, with the West Coast region last night, and it was a tremendous. Uh, success. Uh, the Lord blessed solid, uh, blessed NorCal tremendously. Uh, so just so that you all know, the appreciation is going to be Friday night uh, at inside the sanctuary. We'll be inside the sanctuary as well as online. Uh, and that, and I understand those of you who do, don't want to come, but um, uh, we're going to co come in and be masked up and sometimes you can't get off work and, and be there in time. So that's going to be inside the sanctuary um, on, uh, on, the, on the 10th. And then on the 12th, it's going to be at 8 o'clock in, uh, in the Valley. We'll have our service there in person uh, as well as online. And at 1130, we'll be again online. Uh, I'm sorry, my wife was coming in, telling me what to do, but that's kind of how that go. Um, so we'll be online uh, and in, in house on Friday, on Sunday at eight o'clock and 11.30, you'll be able to get it online as well as in house. Consecration is gonna be going on Friday, uh, 23 hours. Um, and that'll be um, in the morning from, uh, I think it's, 11 to from 12 a.m. to 11 p.m. and prayer from 7:30 to to 8:30. Uh, tomorrow night, as mission as sister was saying, is going to be uh, prayer, and that's going to be um, it's uh, the call of our district missionary. It was very very important to her. So we'll be fasting from 9 a.m. to 6:45 in the afternoon, and then we'll be praying from 6 to 6:45. All right, we'll close it out with prayer. Uh, so I want to encourage you on the 21st. 26, excuse me, we'll be going to um, Christian Tabernacle Church in Oakland. I'll be speaking on that Sunday afternoon. And so um, that's our friend, that's our brother, our sister church, which is uh, in Oakland, Christian Tabernacle Superintendent and First Lady Sonia Harris. So I'm asking all of you all to join us as we go and be a part of that service. All right, we're going to read on. You, you'll see as you go on further, there's a lot going on. Uh, but I wanted to touch bases with those because those are coming up in the next, you know, 10 days or so, 20 days or so. So um, we're, we're, we're doing a whole lot and we're back at it. Amen. We, but we want to do it wisely. All right. Uh, if there are no other announcements, glory to God, if you'll get your, and you've got your best seed together. Um, thank you very much for pulling up those, those announcements. Um, and I see, um, Missionary Green is going to be doing, she's going to be leading a group. Is that the 18th of, yeah, the 18th of September. She's going to be leading a, a jurisdictional group. Uh, I am fearfully and wonderfully made uh, a virtual empowerment symposium for women. So we praise God for her, for her opportunity, uh, Young Women's Christian Council. And we thank God that she's able to work at that level of ministry. All right. Um, there are no other comments or questions or concerns. If you have your best seat, if you'll turn that in, we appreciate it. Uh, 
All right, uh, I'm, 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 we're ready to go. Um, uh, First Lady, can you give us a closing word of prayer? Amen. Praise God. Father God, we just thank you. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the word that we have heard tonight, Father God. And again, Lord, don't let us just be hearers of your word, but let us be doers of your word, Father God. Don't let us walk around and carry anything on our hearts, Father God, that is against you. And right now, Lord, we thank you for each and every person that's on this line tonight. Father God, continue to bless them, continue to heal them. Whatever concerns them, Father God, you know all about it. And right now, Lord, we're giving everything to you, all of our cares, all of our problems, anything, Father God, that's deep rooted down inside of us. We're asking you right now to take it away, heal it right now in your name, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for giving us the desire to want to forgive because, Father God, we don't want to live this life that we're living in vain because if we don't be obedient to to your word, Father God, we're going to miss the mark. So right now, Lord, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for the fellowship that you have put between us, Father God. Continue to bless us, Father God, as we are in this place and as we leave Zoom tonight. We love you and we lift you up and we magnify you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, everybody. Unmute yourself. Holler at somebody. Tell them you love them. Glory to God. God God bless you all. Y'all have a blessed day. Amen. God bless you. God bless you all. I love you all. Love y'all. Bless you.